Uh, all right. Hello, everyone. Uh, I do my second review. To be honest, today, and this review for me is actually of the sequel series of the show Vikings. And basically, this series here is called Vikings Valhalla. And some of you do not know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big fucking fan of the Vikings series. I have every single season on Blu ray and DVD. So. Uh, I was very excited, and I don't think, as much as I enjoyed the latter seasons of season, of, uh, I think it was season five and on of the series of Vikings, I feel like it wasn't the same without the main lead, uh, Ragnar Lothbrok, mind you. I think, for me, I, I think season one through four of Vikings were excellent, five through, five through five and six were pretty solid. So, yeah. Um, let's put this here. We got a great viewing of the arm right there with a the great Viking longsword. Um, I just realized I have an axe there. <laughs> but that's just because it fits. Um, as a Stormbreaker, which is Thor, who's also a Venmodic god. Anyway, uh, my review of Vikings Valhalla, this is basically as a sequel series, essentially, but it works not really as a, as a lenient sequel. It's more of a sequel that happened later on. I think it takes about 150 to 100 years later. And in this series, um, a group of Vikings were born in England, and they were slaughtered because of the king ordered them so. So, and basically one of their sons, who becomes one of the most influential Vikings in history, Leif Erikson, him and his tribe and other Vikings lead a revolt against the English because I believe um, them and basically uh, England in a way become kind of like supporting allies in this time as they've begun to expand within their culture and their religion, um, giving hand in hand with both paganism and Christianity at the time. And seeing how that kind of goes and seeing a bit more of um, the. Oh, god damn. I forgot the name of the town. Oh, oh, shame on me for forgetting the main town in this series. Um, but, um... Oh, shoot. Catty Cat. That's it. If you know the, sh if you know the show, then you know the name. It's Catty Cat. Um, which is the main town. Basically, a bunch of... Leader Erickson and a bunch of these other fucking leaders lead a revolt against them, saying, Hey, you killed our forefathers and a bunch of them... Uh, while in the trade reliance, that's not cool. We're exacting vengeance upon you for this. And um, um, basically, the rest of the story off goes and how Lee Ferguson tries to break away from the. I don't really break away, but trying to find his own identity within this as well as he comes part of the group that ends up revolting against England. But also how this will end in the future because he finds. Um, I believe it was Finland, or he hunts one of the great, uh, one of the northern lands, one of the Scandinavian lands in in, in um, Europe. What the hell is wrong with me? <laughs> but um, because he also trying to break away from his father, who was in, who he himself was a great man, who was both a controversial figure and within his own right. So. What I really love about this movie, uh, no, it's not a movie, it's a Viking, it's a Netflix TV series that continues on a saga. First off, I think the last four, I think, I thought, for me, I thought the, the main, the first episode was very strong. I understand the tone and the focus and the driven, like, revenge tale of what kind of drives, brings out that Viking passion and the fury and the rage. Traditionally, I love the story writing there. I love it. I really thought the main characters for their own sake, for the most part, were all really good. They all added something very well to substance and they all really had a great motive and understanding of what drove them forward for the plot and the story, what really drove them forward. The you know, the thrust was there. I felt like the writing from the original show was still here, it, while also keeping itself different. The, uh, the intro 
feels a lot more like a PS3 game, and I'm not insulting it by saying that. I don't think that's an insult. It more feels like a video game cutscene of the intro rather than the, you know, Fever Ray, if I had the heart, iconic um, intro for Vikings, which alternated from season to season, but still a great intro of the original Vikings show, and I, I, like the, I like the intro as well. The intro theme and part two, but it feels like a bit more like a video game cutscene. The dialogue, the writing is still very strong in this, in this first season here. I think season episodes two, three, four, episodes two and three were okay, and then the latter half, like four, five, six, seven, and eight. I think it was eight episodes. Um, let me recheck. Let me let me, let me just recheck this. Yeah, that was right. It was like a very strong beginning episode. So episodes two and three were okay, and then episode four was like, oh, okay. Now the assault is happening. Now the full momentum is kicking off, and it's got an alternative path. And from episode four and on to episode eight, it was it felt like it was like, okay, now it's really going somewhere. Something happening. Um, which also leads to me, um, one of my biggest faults with it, with this overall, in my view. The actor who plays Leif Erikson, bless his heart, he's trying his best. But in the first few episodes, it just felt like he was just being held back. He wasn't really nearly as interesting or as character, or as charismatic or as Bjorn or magnetic. He wasn't nearly as magnetic or driven or interesting as... Ragnar, or Bjorn, or Ivar, or Ivan, or any of the, um, or any of the Lost Blood sons, in truth. Which, by the way, Bjorn isn't actually his own biological son, to say. Um, but, um, the first few episodes for Bjorn, um, for, um, ah, uh, motherfucker, sheesh. For Lee Ferrickson, damn it! Um, I, I felt like he was just kind of a little bit strange. He felt like a bit of like a wet towel. He wasn't really as interesting or there. But finally, once he gets called into action and once he sees fellow comrades um, break the dust in action scenes, and that's not a big spoiler. Vikings are known to die in battle and go to Valhalla. Yeah. Um, essentially. And like it, in, the, in those moments, you see him kind of like see the cracks in the surface, and you see him just like the real monster emerge from there. And I want to see a more unhinged performance rather than him being kind of like you know the typical wet noodle main character who's just not really as interesting. Because again, the first few episodes I thought he was just kind of not there. I don't think his character was really understood until he was narratively brought to action. Well, everything kind of finally like got swept up, and he himself was like, "Where do I find myself in all of this? How do I know um, myself away from my father? How do I become my own man, essentially?" And I think that was a very interesting plot line. But again, his performance wasn't all the captivating until the last few episodes, where I thought it was really good then. And I'm like, "Yes, bring it forward. I want to see more unhinged." radicalized, angry man who finds himself in both combat and in life. And I think that Leif Erikson will find himself through those fruitions and becoming a great leader through that. Because the actor, um... Some call that, like as I said, bless his heart, he's really talented. But it's in those last few episodes where I felt like he was finally where I was like, yes. Now you see that rage, and you see that driven nature, like Bjorn, he's forged in fire. And I think that's really something. He's a warrior. Not a, he's both a warrior and a schemer. He, and to me, he's more, in my view, he's come, he needs to become something like a nice mix of um, Bjorn's brashness and anger, as well as Ragnar's charisma, and Ivar's uh, immense cunning and all three mixed up into him and I just and I don't see Leif Erikson having that yet but I really want really really want to see the potential within the next few seasons to really kick it through 
because for the most part, I think this is a really solid first season. But for, but yeah, that's my main main gripe with this. The main character is not nearly as interesting as he as he should be. So yeah, that's my overall review for Vikings the High Level One. I really do hope you enjoyed it. And uh, as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the future for more videos. As always, till then, I give this four. I'm going to give this, um, <laughs> I wish a good, uh, level this. I give this four, I give this, uh, four and a half, um, Mahonias out of five. <laughs> um, if you know what Mahonia is, it's Thor's Hammer. Or, or, uh, four and a half Stormbreakers out of five. It's a really, again, I thought all the other characters were really good and really well developed and everything. But my one big rape is with the main character himself. Nick Erickson needs to stand out more. So, uh, yeah. To the number one, I really do hope you enjoyed my review. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll have my brand new review for you guys soon. Till then, peace.